know by now, I don't give a fire starter a mic. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, somebody bless the name of the Lord in this house. Come on, give him that in spite of praise. Come on. That no matter how you bless me, God bless me anyhow kind of praise. Come on, somebody open up your mouth. Give your God glory in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, that's that excitement that we talked about on last week. Come on, it's going to run over. Hallelujah. It's going to cause somebody else to come up from where they are. Y'all ain't talking. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you came in heavy today, I dare you to open up your mouth and give your God a real praise. Hallelujah. He's going to strip you of all the heaviness. Yes, he is. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, put on your garments. Put on your garments of praise. Somebody open up your mouth and bless his holy name. Glory to your name, Jesus. You're wonderful, Father. There's none like you nowhere. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Wednesday night midweek power surge. Hallelujah, Jesus. Y'all, I'm getting ready for something. I don't know what it is, but I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm getting ready. Ready for overflow. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Somebody give God a real praise one more time. Hallelujah. We're going to say welcome to our YouTube and Facebook partners on tonight. Bless you on tonight. Amen. Hope you have your pen and paper. <laughs> so you can take some good notes. Amen, somebody. Amen. We give God praise tonight. Can we bless the Lord tonight for the angel of this house, our bishop? Yes, Lord. Amen. He is a man with great vision. Amen. I love him so much. So we appreciate you, Bishop. Amen. Give it up for the elders. Elder A.P. Leverett. Elder Bennett. Amen. Mother Rome. Got a good report. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, Bishop said, form a line. If you got sickness in your body, form a line. The praise report came back today. Clear. Woo. Clear. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, give it up for Mother Brown. Amen. All of our ministers, our newly appointed elders in the house. <laughs> God is so awesome. I'm excited. Listen, I'm running over. I am literally running over. Amen. So we're not going to prolong the time because we got maybe two or three speakers tonight. So we want to make room for all of them if possible. Amen. Amen. We're going to bring up before you first our DIT, Deacon in Training, David Frazier. Somebody give God a praise for him as he come to your front. Amen. Come on, bless him real good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening. First, I want to give honor to God, who is my life, my bishop, my daddy, my pastor, mama. I love you both. I've waited my entire life for this moment right here. I don't mean to stall or nothing, but... <laughs> I got to laugh a little bit to kind of get it out, but uh, my phone wasn't working at the time Pastor sent me the message that I, I was up next. So the wife over here, <laughs> she, she, uh, 
She's like, babe, you know you up, right? I'm like, up where? <laughs> Upstairs, because we got a couple of stairs, you know, from my office to the house, mm, to the living room. And I'm like, what are you, up where? She's like, up next to teach. Teach what? Where? Because, I mean, because I was in a place for, what, 14 years, and all I ever was was just a cameraman. And before that, I was always snapping pictures and making everybody look good on the announcement. So, of course, I had to just, you know, I never thought I'd ever be up here in this pulpit. But I thank God for his grace for seeing something in me to allow me to do this. And then I hear I got to teach <laughs> One thing I don't have, <laughs> but actually, I thank God for this opportunity, and um, I'm here. We going I'm gonna see how we gonna work this thing out. All right. So, Galatians 5:22, and it reads, "But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace." Patience. Everybody say patience. patience. Say it again. Patience. patience. Kindness. Kindness. Goodness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. Gentleness. And self-control. Self Against such things there is no law. Now the dictionary tells us that patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Now, on a spiritual note, patience is trusting God to keep his promises in his perfect timing. Tonight, I want to use as my title of the topic, patience. I may not like having it, but it's necessary. So this chair right here, I, I asked uh, permission to have this chair up here, and this was necessary for me, because this chair is where I normally sit, right over here on the right, and this chair represents the part of me that needs this the most. So I wanted the chair to be right here because I can't say nothing to encourage nobody if I don't receive it first. And the way I see it sometimes, I'm 80% no patient, ten, and there's 20 left, so it's 10% at home <laughs> and the other 10% here at the ministry <laughs> when it comes to patience. I don't mean to laugh so much, but I'm serious. When I was told that I had to preach on patience, the one thing I know I lack <laughs> But I need this, and I need this, I'm, and I know I'm, I'm sick enough about patience that I know I need this. And so, therefore, I asked, could I have that part of me that needed the most to sit right here? So when you see me talking to this guy, I'm talking to me. Is that all right? Can we do that? All right. Oh. The word patience is called macrothemia, which describes patience as endurance, steadfast, consistent, I'm sorry, yeah, that's right, consistent, perseverance, long-suffering, forbearance, and being slow to using avenging words. Ugh, that's a tall order. Because we know even if nobody else don't, I get this. Okay. even if nobody else don't, we know we use avenging words. And uh, we got to work on that. I mean, I'm kind of full about it because I feel so, uh, sometimes I feel bad the way I speak in front of my wife in front of certain people, over the phone, even when I'm flipping people off on the road. I'm being honest, I'm being transparent tonight. This, I'm just being honest, because like I said, I need this the most, okay? And 
you know, that's a tall order to me. That's why I wanted to start with that first. Because I got to start with me. And my question that I want to begin with is, why is it so important for us to be patient? And that's because, to me, the fact that God is first patient with us. Think of the number of times we've ignored that still, small voice when we were doing everything we were big and bad enough to do. Think of the number of times we messed up and walked away from God. Allowed it with um, being patient, while being patient for us to come back. While we were out there getting ourselves in all kind of stuff, me first, stuff that could have harmed us, hurt us, altered the way we live our lives, killed us ultimately. Everybody that's out there doing their own thing may not make it back to God. But by the grace of God, we did. Those of us that knew better. Everybody <laughs> that walk out them his, you know, that circle of care, that circle of protection. You may not make it back to God. And I'm gonna make it personal. Everybody that leaves the presence, the connection, the prayers, the they everybody that leaves, the leaders, the covering, may not make it back. And so part of my prayer a lot of times is for those that need to be here, that I've seen here, to get back here and get down to submission. Amen. So God is patiently waiting on us to get it together and to choose him. Like Peter, 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with us, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So you telling me, Bishop, that God want me to come back to repentance? You mean even though I done got out there, got myself in a whole bunch of rut, then told a few lies, then played a few games, then been in some clubs, I mean, no, I'm, I'm just saying in general now because a lot of stuff I don't do, then smoked a little bit, drank a little bit, then got all the way out there and got all myself in a rut, drama, getting caught up, being where I ain't supposed to be, Lying to the ministry. I ain't here like I'm supposed to be. Not in the word like I'm supposed to be. Looking at people with an ugly face. And he gonna still take me back? Okay. I'm gonna read that again. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, instead he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. After being out there for so long doing our own thing, we begin to develop a thought. I done messed up so bad, I can't come back to God. I done said some stuff I ain't never said, I shouldn't have said. His arms won't open up to me. I done messed up. I done made God mad. He ain't going to take me back. We get out there long enough, we stay out there long enough, we start talking to ourselves about the wrong stuff. Amen, somebody. So it's like we're being a hostage to our own selves. Being our own hostage, the meat mountain. And to me, the meat mountain has to move out of the way. So patience demonstrates faith and trust. As we patiently wait for him to move in our lives, we are exercising faith in him. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And when you tie that into patience, having faith in him while waiting on him to fulfill his promises will please him. Is there anybody here that would like to please God in any way you possibly can? Isaiah 40 and 30. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord 
Somebody say, trust in the Lord. Lord. Will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. So let me stop right there for a second. Interject. Why do you think, I'm going to read that piece again, they will soar high on wings like eagle, eagles. So why, let me ask y'all something. Why do y'all think that God chose the eagle? Now think about this before you say something, or check it out. The eagle ain't the highest soaring bird in the world. The eagle ain't even on the top ten list of the, first, the top ten birds of prey in the world. So God picked a bird that ain't on the top ten list, but yet <laughs> this is a bird that ain't on the list, top ten of the entire world. There are billions of birds out there, lots of species all over the world. Robin and me was watching the Nature Channel last week. I love science. Science was my favorite subject back in school. And I studied nearly every part of science from physical, health, earth, oceanography, astronomy. Oceanography was my favorite because uh, I love just studying about the fish and all of the species that's underwater. But I love science. And I wanted to turn her on to something new. And she liked it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whenever you want to give something new to who God gives to you, it's always a blessing to them. And based on her reaction, we enjoyed that. We watched the, all of the, we watched the whole season. <laughs> Ain't nothing else to watch on that. But what I want to know is, because think about this. The highest flying bird is the griffin vulture. Then there's the bearded vulture, the crane. The mallard, the bar-nosed goose, the bar-tailed godwit, the whooper swan, the white stork, the alpine chaff, and the aldine condor. But where on that list do you see eagle? So what makes the eagle an animal that ain't on the list but is existing stand out from all ten of those birds of prey? What makes you stand out from all of the people? We got millions and billions and billions of people all over the place. But what makes you stand out? The, what makes the, the eagle stand out is the fact that he's a large bird. He's got talons, real strong talons. And he can see from three miles away. The eagle will soar 10,000 feet in the air, 10,000 feet, and can see you from three miles away. I believe I got that right. <laughs> I'm pointing to my brother right there because I know he's, he like me, we nerds, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> But anyway, um, the, bird, the, the eagle is unique. The eagle got feathers the eagle just, it's a strong, mighty bird, but it's patient. The, I, I brought the eagle up because it's patient. That's another, that's another quality you won't find in a whole lot of these birds that you won't find in the eagle. The eagle, even soaring up 10,000 feet in the air, and he see a bunny rabbit. Let's say he see a bunny rabbit back him behind the church in them trees. Just a bunny rabbit, just wandering around. Bunny rabbit. And he see him. But with all of the distractions, all of the other trees, the building itself, people, he not going to swoop down and go get him a little prey. He not going to just move. He got to wait. He got to be steady. He got to hold them wings out. He might get a little turbulence in his face from 10,000 feet up in the air, but he got to be patient. He got to hang in there. Oh, here go five people right there. Let me back up. Let me circle around just a little bit. Are you paying attention, mister? He got to circle around. He got to circle around. He looking. He looking. I'm going to make it personal. I was at work by last month, and I work over there at the stadium down here where the Jaguars play. Right next to the stadium is a pond. There's fish, crab, all kind of stuff down there, right in front of the news building. And I'm swearing, I'm, I'm sitting there talking to my crew, and we all sitting there talking. I heard something go, doosh. And I look up, there's an eagle. God is my witness. 
there's an eagle that was that I caught him a fish and he started flowing all the way over to the other side of Metropolitan Park and I'm sitting there staring I'm looking I'm like wow so imagine 10,000 feet in the air a patient eagle not just the eagle not just the eagle but a patient eagle a patient eagle waiting looking lurking just waiting Perfect timing. Bam. Got him. Thank you. <laughs> Patient. Patient pays off. Can I get a witness to that? Patience pays off even for a bird of prey. But what about the fact that what if ain't nothing out here for that eagle to see? Deacon Frazier, I don't see nothing moving, though. He promised me. He gave me a promise according to word, to his word. But I don't see nothing out here moving. I don't see nothing out here moving. But did you ever think that when it comes to a plant, the roots are growing at the bottom, getting stronger? Every time it rains, the rain just feeding it and feeding it. The fertilizer coming from other plants, all that stuff. I'm trying not to use the plant terms, but all that plant fertilization just coming from other places, feeding into that bosom of that plant, feeding them roots that you don't see that's underground. And Pastor talked a couple of months ago about how the root is about how the um, plant is about to bust through the um through the soil. I mean, I know I remember that, and that meant something to me. That's why I'm using this metaphor, because when it's about to bust through, it's, it's like that's the only reason, okay, it's growing, it's growing, but what about when it's not there? What about when from 10,000 feet, the eagle don't see nothing? He just flying. He got to sit out there until he sees something. That's called patience. 98, I'm sorry, the eagle will fly a total of six hours, six hours at a time before he has to swoop down and lay somewhere and take a break, even if he's hungry. Six hours, 96 miles is what that add up to. I did my research. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, wow. The same animals, me and Robin just sitting there watching, just, whew, that's some amazing birds. And to me, you are some amazing people. That's why God said mount up like eagles and soar. Amen, somebody. Genesis 21 tells us how Abraham was patiently waiting for 25 years for God to fulfill his promise of giving him a son. Along the way, um, impatience did set in, and Sarah convinced him, convinced him, that's the key word, convinced him to have a child with the maid. Now, I'm going to stop right there for a second. When God has promised us anything, somebody say anything. anything. Say it with some conviction. Anything. anything. That's right. When God done promised us anything, 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 say it, anything. You don't need nobody to convince you otherwise that it's coming. Do you hear what I say? Do you hear me? Because that's what my problem is right there. Okay, that's my problem first. I'm not picking at nobody in here, but I'm pointing to you, okay, because I swear on everything. I have, I wasn't taught everything when I was growing up. I mean, I, I was in chapter 7 up until I was in, what, sec, the 7th grade, and then finally I was able to beat the odds and finally get in my regular classes and graduate on time. But I'm brought, I'm brought that up because <laughs> we got to understand that the promise that God gave us from the very beginning, that go for everybody here. When you get the promise a God that don't lie, a patient God that don't lie, 
if he being patient about giving you that same promise, why can't we? Why do we allow people to come into our ear and talk us out of the promise that God promised us? I'm just being real about it because it happens to me. It took a whole lot of prayer and this woman of God over here and sitting under these folks over here for me to realize I got to have a stronger mind because you don't need to be convinced otherwise other than your promise. You ain't got to let nobody get in your ear. Protect your space. You protect your space. Stay patient. Can I get an amen? That was personal to me. They took advantage of me when I was a child. They lied on me. They took already? Oh, I better hurry up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get so excited, man. But I'm going to go ahead and just go through my scriptures then. I want to be obedient. Obedience, that's tied into patience too. Yes, yes. Psalms 37 and 7. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Stop looking at Rick Ross on, on the TV wondering just because he was a former drug dealer and he did a whole bunch of nasty stuff, that's the way you're going to get to the top. I don't think so. When you want a God's chosen, the promise supersedes everything from every dollar to every jewel that Rick Ross got. He ain't got nothing I want because I got a promise that he can't touch. He can't pay for the promise. He can't touch my promise. My promise is way more valuable than Rick Ross, Jules, Nelly, Jay-Z, anybody. <laughs> it's priceless. Because everything Rick Ross ran around his neck came with a price, but not my promise. Luke 15, 18, 18 through 20 talks about the father of the prodigal son. The father of the prodigal son. How he was waiting patiently for his son to come back home. In spite of the fact the prodigal son behaved selfishly by running off and squandering all his money away, his inheritance rather, his father waited patiently for him to come back home and was overjoyed when his son returned. The father of the prodigal son stood afar off. He stayed in place. He stayed in one place where he was from the very beginning. It's like, God, I'm standing right here. I ain't never going nowhere. Where you been, my child? I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you to come on back. Patient with you. That's why I said in the beginning that God is first patient with us. Amen. So, and, that, and that's personal for me because I got three children that I haven't seen in the last five years. No sad faces. Don't, don't look sad. Smile for me. Everybody smile. That's why I know they're coming home, because of y'all just blessing me. And anybody else in this ministry that's in going through the same situation, the prodigal son's father came. I'm sorry. He, he was out there afar off. The prodigal son eventually came to himself. When you are God's chosen and you came from God's chosen, whoever belongs in your life is will return to your life. Receive that somebody other than me. They go for you too. They coming home. They coming home. Romans 8, 25, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it to, with patience. See, there's a difference between waiting and patience. Patience, I'm sorry, waiting is standing where one is or a delayed action until something else happens. But being patient is believing and having faith in the Father while waiting for something to happen. You don't see nothing happening or moving because God is up there cooking up something in the kitchen. <laughs> Ephesians 4 and 2, with all humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another in love. Can we love each other? Can we love on one another? Do me a favor. Get up and go hug somebody right now. Come on. Come on. Make a move. Bless them. Bless him. Come on, bro. Come on, D. I love you, man. I love you, bro. I love you. Make a move. Bless somebody. Don't let them walk out of here the same. How much I got left? Make a move. 
Bye bye. Okay. I'm trying to go fast. All my papers had that fail. Make a move. We impacting lives on purpose, not just on Sunday when we in this church. We impacting lives on purpose each and every time we come in this building. When you walk out them doors, impact. You just bless somebody. Somebody going to take a W home tonight just because of what you just did. God bless you. I got five left. Okay. I'm trying to go fast. <laughs> Make a move. Make a move. Now, <laughs> the oven versus the microwave. The microwave, you take it, you take your entree, you throw it in the microwave, and in a couple of minutes, it'll be all right. It's a little dark on this side, a little burnt on this side, not cooked in the middle. <laughs> Spaghetti that splattered all over the microwave. <laughs> she she fussed at me when I do that, so I started using a cover. But anyway, but when you put your food in the oven, you might have to Wait a little while. But it's going to be evenly. Evenly. Evenly cooked. You might have to sit there and wait. The aroma going to get you a little crunk. Make you a little hangry. But if you wait just a little while, wait about 25 minutes compared to waiting two minutes. When you eat it, you will enjoy it. You will love it. You will be grateful for it. Just remember to pray over it before you do. Patience will pay off even when it's evenly cooked. Can y'all do that for me? Evenly cooked. Amen. Now, I'm a movie nut. I got to add this in here. Eddie Murphy was even patient on coming to America. When him and Arsenio Hall, they went to the Black Awareness Rally. Soon as they sat down, Arsenio was like, pick one and let's go home. But Eddie said, be patient, my friend. I believe patience is the topic of my subject on tonight, so I wanted to add that piece in there, be patient. And to me, Eddie Murphy had it in him, in spite of his desire to want to just, uh, but he had enough sense to just hold back and be patient. He had to work. He had to do some diligent stuff throughout the entire movie, but because of his patience, he didn't have to force feed the situation. He had to jump in there and, you know, do, you know, have to sabotage nothing. But I appreciate the fact that he was patient about the whole thing, and everything he did fell into place, and it just helped him to win in the very end. So I just wanted to say to Eddie Murphy, thank you, because it helped me too. <laughs> In my closing, I just want to say that if you've gotten anything from me tonight, my brothers and my sisters, my bishop, my pastor, I encourage everybody to take hold of the value of patience. P-A-T-I-E-N-C-E. -E. Perse be perseverant, attentive, tenacious, impactful, since we impact in lives on purpose, right? Endurant, noble, consistent, and effective. Patience. I might not like having it, but it's necessary. God bless you. Wow. Good job, good job. You, You're so welcome. Y'all come on and give him another. He said he'd been waiting on this moment all his life. And he did an amazing job. Amen. Amen. Listen, never change being who you are. All right? Did you hear me? Don't ever change being who you are. Okay? Everybody's delivery is not the same, right? And where we mess up is trying to operate in somebody else's anointing. Your delivery was you, and it was effective. So come on and give him a hand.
This man told me I'm talking mother. You're talking mother. <laughs> awesome job, son. All right, we're going to move on out the way, and we're going to make room for this firecracker right here, this firecracker. Amen. Minister Charlene Carter. Come on, somebody. And come on, somebody ought to give God some glory in the house tonight, amen, because he's worthy of it all, amen, amen. Well, you know, my assignment um, was long-suffering, and uh, when uh, Bishop uh, texted me uh, early one morning and said, yeah, be ready, <laughs> you know, I want you to minister on some long-suffering, and, um, you know, um, well, we'll get there. But I just want to um, tell you, you know, I, I honor you as my bishop in the house of the Lord and, and my pastor. And, um, you know, I remember you not long ago just telling me you were admonishing me not to um, lose my fire and my zeal. Um, you know, and I definitely will not do that. You know, um, I, I look back, um, you know, I've been a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ for 24 years and in that 24 years there's been a lot of long suffering you know some of it was due to me and the choices I made in my life um, you know so as a as an early um, as an early uh, young lady I, I made choices that was devastating um, but I had to suffer those consequences uh, but then you know coming into the Lord you know there's Sufferings that you didn't think you had to put up with in the church. Can I get an amen right there? You know, so, you know, many of us have to endure long suffering in the very house of God where you wouldn't think you had to have long suffering. But you know what? When I look back, Bishop, Pastor, over my life, no matter what I've been through, Christ, God's long-suffering is nothing compared to what we have gone through. So tonight, that's, that's what I'm going to minister on tonight, but I just want to pray real quick. Father God, we come before you right now in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And Father God, no matter how much I've studied or practiced, Father God, God, unless the Holy Spirit breathes afresh on this word, God, that it would enlighten, Father God, that it would encourage, Father God, that it would give hope, Father God, that it would bring clarity, Father God, that there is another level in you, Father God, that you want us to manifest in our very lives. And Father God, we give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' matchless name. Amen and amen. You know, I'm getting a little bit older, so I have to take off my glasses to be able to read my notes. And, um, you know, I love, to, I, I love the word because when I, um, when I got saved, I mean, I was coming from crack cocaine and from a lifestyle of a prostitute. And, you know, maybe some people don't want to share that, you know, that they're experienced. But, you know, I was street. So it took all that for me. It took, you know... Um, uh, hours on end, I would just get in the Word of God, and, and, and I would, you know, no one really taught me, but I began to just get in the Word, and, and I would just for hours look at one verse, and I would go back to the Hebrew and the Greek, and, and I would just, you know, we used to have this overflow building that was open 24 hours a day, and, and I would go in there, and, and I, you know, on a Friday night, instead of going smoking crack cocaine, I'd be, you know, I had to leave that lifestyle. So I, I would go into the church and I would spend the night. And, and others were praying. So, you know, I didn't know, you know, I mean, I'm new to this, you know, I mean, I'm street. But um, so, you know, I just begin to just stay in the presence of God. And, and as I'm growing, and I'm, I'm saying this, all this, because that's what it took for me. 
You know, some people don't have to do all that. But I'll tell you what, why you see me joyful, why you see me praise the way I praise, why you see me be exhaling on fire as I'm on fire, because I know that I should be in hell. I should be dead today. But it was by the grace of God that he brought me out. So, okay, I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to teach tonight. I'm going to teach and I'm not going to preach. Okay, so my assignment, and I got 20 minutes now, so it's on long suffering. Amen. And I gave her a uh, long suffering scene through God's eyes through the Word of God. So, again, if you could put Galatians 5 22 up, that's our key scripture. Amen. Amen. So, Galatians 5 and 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And we'll get to that at the end of the message, okay? Because I want to expound a little bit on that. Okay, so Paul. Now listen, I love what Minister uh, Roxanne said. I don't have time to put all the scriptures up and some of the things that I'm going to say. So if you want to uh, be attentive to the word tonight, get your pen and papers out and take some notes. But Paul was writing this letter to the church of Galilee uh, in Galatians 1 verses 1 and 2. Um, you know, for us to begin to understand Galatians 5.22 uh, better, we must look at the scriptures contextually. Contextualization is the process of assigning meaning as a means of interpreting the environment within which a text or action is executed. The Galatians were bewitched by Judaizers. You know, we got some of them still in the church today. You know, them religious people. These people were teaching a gospel that was no gospel at all. Paul wrote to the confused believers in Galilee to help them see that they were being taught a false gospel that depended on human efforts to make a person acceptable to God, which was completely contrary to the, to, to the true gospel of salvation and sanctification. By grace, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, throughout Galatians, the contrast between flesh and spirit between living by human perspective and living by God's perspective is highlighted. Paul says it's impossible to live by both because they are dramatically opposed to one another. Now, can, I think we all can attest to that. The flesh and the spirit are always continually at war. That's why Galatians teaches us that the only way to obtain victory over the flesh is to walk in the spirit. And God knows we need the truth because we will continually to battle in the flesh as long as we are in these immortal bodies or imperfect bodies. If we are to experience any liberty, any freedom and victory that the true gospel offers, we must adapt a spiritual kingdom mindset so that we live in the power of the spirit and not in the defeat of the flesh. Wow. Amen. So I want to take a little closer look at the original meaning in Greek to have a better understanding of the text. Because remember, I'm coming contextually um, through the scripture. So when you look at the word fruit, that word is pronounced katos. Literally meaning plucked. Whew, that's deep, but we're just going to keep going. Okay. Of the spirit, number two, is novma. Meaning a current of air or breath, a breeze. By analogy or figuratively, a spirit. As we take a closer look at the fruit of the spirit, and we've already, you know, Bishop's already mentioned this. It's one fruit. 
but it has nine attributes of the Spirit of God that exhibits themselves in the lives of the born-again believer. Amen? We must establish another important point relating to the life of a true Christian. Real fruit comes from the Spirit of God. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. No one can have it unless you're a true born-again believer. Amen? All right. Well, John 3, 5, and 6, all these scriptures are going to be through the King James. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And Romans 8, 9, now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That makes it real simple. If you don't have the spirit of Christ in you, you're not of God. Now salvation does not reform our natural self. What reformation does, it makes a change or improvement or it restructures. But salvation transforms us by giving us a new life. Christ comes to dwell in the life of the believer. Whereby previously did he not dwell. Now we have the spirit in us so the fruit of the spirit can manifest through us. That's some mighty stuff. Now, transformation is an internal change, while the reformation is an act of making an improvement, especially a change of a person's behavior or structure. John 15, 4 and 5 says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abideth. In the vine, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth, that means continually, brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. The word abide in Greek means, see morpho no me. That's a pretty hard word, but I think I got it. But that <laughs> means to remain or stay to continue to exist and to persist. So again, at the beginning, I said that how does God view long-suffering? In 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord and, you know, my brother over here, um, Deacon, uh, mentioned this verse, uh, 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering yeah. to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. And Romans 9, 22, what if God, willing to show forth his wrath, to make his power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Psalms 86, 15. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plentiness in mercy and in truth. Luke 18, 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? And Colossians 1, 10 and 11. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long-suffering enjoin us. So the word for long-suffering in the original Greek is makroth omea, from makros, meaning long distance, far off, large. And when you add that to thromos, it means temper, passion, 
to be furious or burn with intense anger. It's literally long-tempered as opposed to short-tempered. A long holding out of the mind before it gives room to action or passion. Describes a state of emotional calm or quietness in the face of provocation, misfortune, unfavorable circumstances. Long-suffering is the capacity to be wronged and not retaliate. It is the ability to hold one's feelings in restraint, to bear up under the oversights and wrongdoings afflicted by others without retaliating. So Machenroth Omiya is often used in the Old Testament to translate the Hebrew phrase, achrach opim, which literally means long-nosed or breathing, slow breathing. Now, I got to stop right here. Some of us, me, <laughs> um, I can relate to the intense uh, feelings of anger. And what happens when you get angry? Or you get enraged? Or you might even have a blackout. You start to breathe rapidly. And then your nostrils, what do they begin to do? They begin to flare up. <laughs> and the outward then manifests what the inward feelings. Woo! But what long suffering is slow, slow to anger. He doesn't move like that. But we're so quick to flare up, you know, to get it, to get excited, to get, you know, say what you're going to say. You say that to me? Oh, no, I don't think so. And then we retaliate back. But that's not what long suffering is. That's why we have to see it through God's eyes because we can never obtain it. We can never try it. The best we try, the best we do, we cannot do it in of ourselves. We have to do it through the Spirit of God. So 14 times this phrase occurs in the Old Testament showing God's slowness to anger. And 14 times in the New Testament, patience and long-suffering, depending on what um, version you are um, reading from. Also translated, large emotion, signifying, I love this, wells of endurance that will not dry up, no matter how much is drawn from them. That is so powerful. We as Christians, with that kind of patience, will be refreshing water to sustain us continually effectiveness even in the face of unrelenting pressures those who possess and have this level of patience or long suffering receive and inherit the promise not all are going to inherit the promise but those who are continually walking in the spirit and the fruit of his spirit will obtain the promises of God so how do we cultivate the attributes of long-suffering quickly? Number one, we must be born again. We already determined that, John 3, uh, 5 and 6. Uh, number two, through obedience. That's a big one, John 14, 21. Three, through the word of God, Matthew 4 and 4. Through prayer, Psalm 17, 6 and 7. We must recognize that our sinful nature, there is no power in us to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit. All that we accomplish in our own strength or determination will always fall short by comparison. And Romans 7, 18 says, For I know in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. So when we're born of the Spirit of God, we have the power of the Spirit at work in us to change, we no longer must live according to the sinful nature, but we have the power of the Holy Spirit to help us live that and be pleasing to God. So again, Galatians 5.22, 
at the end of the verse says, against there is no such law. So what Paul is uh, contrasting is the freedom that Christians have as a result of their salvation by faith in Christ. And how God now dwelling within them by the presence of the Holy Spirit and that frutality associated with having to perfectly keep the law of God. So in Galatians 5, I'm sorry, in Galatians 2.16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith of Christ. This is such a powerful scripture. If we can really get that, that we are ju- we're not justified by the law. We're not justified by, you know, just coming to church, by, you know, just praying and, and just singing in the choir and ushering and, and all the things that we're doing. We're not justified by any of that. But we're justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, but by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Even today, we still have religious people declaring to us that we must perform a certain way, do certain things, or act a certain way to have salvation. Now, in my, uh, these are the uh, attributes and the habits that God promotes and encourages rather than forbids since they assist believers in fulfilling the overall intent of the whole law. So what does the law do? Number one, the law prohibits... Grace invites and gives. Number two, the law condemns the sinner. Grace redeems the sinner. The law, number three, says do. God said, grace says it's done. Law, number four, says curses us. Grace says God blesses us. The law, number five, slay the sinner. Grace makes the sinner alive. Six, law says pay what you owe. Grace says freely forgives you. The law seven, wages of sin is death. But grace, the gift of God, is eternal life. Number eight, law reviles sin. What does grace do? Grace atones from sin. Number nine, the law demands obedience. Grace bestows and gives power to obey. And number 10, the law puts us under bondage. But grace sets us in liberty to be the sons of God. Amen? Amen. So as I conclude on the fruit of the Spirit, on long-suffering in Galatians 5 and 22, you know, I really believe with my whole heart that if we just live and we walk in the freedom and the liberty of the Holy Spirit by surrendering our will over to Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, he will guide us, he will empower us to manifest the attributes of long-suffering as long as we continually see it through the eyes of God and how he sees the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Well, somebody give God some praise tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. He's worthy of it. Amen. Woo. Listen here. We got some teachers in this house. Amen. Come on and give her a good God bless you. Long suffering seen through God's eyes through the word of God. Amen. I like that part where she said we have endu- uh, wells of endurance that never run dry. Oh, y'all ain't get excited. But I was over there asking the Lord to give me wells of endurance that they never run dry. You know why? Because people are always drinking from my well. Y'all ain't talking. Always pulling from the well. And I need wells of endurance that I can keep going and never run dry. Give us long suffering. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we have one more speaker. Y'all give us a few more. Yes, because cause so, so we got, I'll tell y'all after the live, but we got something that's happening starting next week. So we want to get this man of God up because you know what? They was ready, but somebody had to go, you know, she had to go um, on a, um, yeah, she, she had to go that way. So, so, but he has been ready. And he called his bishop yesterday and said he was still ready. And this deacon is our newest. He is the newest of the bunch. Amen. But for him to call and say he ready, that blessed me. Come on, Deacon Turner. Clap with that. Clap with that hand. Praise the Lord. I want to give honor to God, which is the head of my life. All right. To Bishop in his absence. <laughs> to Pastor. Honor to my wife. And everyone else in their respective place. For the past couple of months, we've been teaching on the fruit of the Spirit. But the word that I have is not of the fruit of the Spirit, but it is important on its own. The word I have is forgiveness. And as I began to study forgiveness, it just showed me some things that I dealt with in the past and is still dealing with, you know, good and bad. But, you know, I just realized you, you have to be honest where you are sometimes. There you go. And um, so as I really start studying, and I don't know how Bishop gave me this word. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know either. I just don't know, but it really blessed me Amen. to study it because I never really went into depth in forgiveness. Uh-huh. And uh, if you would go to your Bible yes. to Matthew 6 and 14. It's Matthew 6 and 14 and 15. Say amen when you have it. Amen. And it reads, For if ye forgive men their trespass, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men of their trespass, neither will your Father forgive you. My God. So, Matthew 6 and 14 talks about asking God for forgiveness as well as declaring our forgiveness of wrongdoing of others. God asks us to forgive without conditions and limitations and to make forgiveness our responsibility. And if we say we forgive others but still bear grudge against them, that forgiveness is not in line with God's will. Only by putting aside our prejudice or grudge towards others, towards others, we can um, we can be after God's heart. So, what does forgiveness mean? Forgiveness is an intentional. It's an intentional decision to let go of resentment and anger. Forgiveness is letting go of the emotions of your past. It does not neglect, it does not negate, condone, or nullify accountability. Forgiveness free, free you from your emotional bound, bondage. It frees you from your emotional bondage. Let me put my glasses on. <laughs> I didn't put my glasses on. <laughs> I know. Um, forgiveness frees you from your emotional bound bondage. It breaks the power that another person still has over your emotions. Yes. Remember, forgiveness is for us, not the offender. Forgiveness set, forgiveness frees you from bitterness, captivity of hate, angry words, and deeds against our offender. Forgiveness allows us to truly worship God in spirit 
and in truth without hindrance in our minds. The best revenge for someone who hurt you is to learn to forgive them. Because there is, because there is power in forgiveness. Genesis 50 and 17, forgiveness restores broken relationships. Luke 7 and 17, forgiveness is a path to love. Luke 5 and 17 through 26, forgiveness precedes healing. Forgiving doesn't erase the past, but it looks upon it with compassion. Forgiveness is about going through a process where you get to, to a place where you let go of the resentment and try to see the other person in a new light and hope for the best for them. So, how do you let go of hurt and resentment? Number one, acknowledge your emotions about the harm done to you. Number two, recognize how your emotions affect your behavior and work to release them. Number three, choose to forgive a person who offended you. And number four, release the control and power that the offending person and situation have done in your life. So, <laughs> so we are to forgive people graciously. That is, you are to forgive them even when they don't deserve it. It's like how God forgave you when you didn't deserve it. We are to, relieve, we are to forgive them freely. That is, you are not to make them pay for it. You're not, you are not supposed to make them pay for it somehow. You are to forgive them freely as God forgives you in Christ. You are to forgive them deeply. Just like it, just like it doesn't matter what you did, God will forgive you in the same way you will forgive them no matter what they did. And you are to forgive them repeatedly. No matter how many times they did it or continue to do it, you are to forgive them as often as God has forgiven you. The three greatest examples of forgiveness in the Bible is Joseph. Number one is Joseph. When he forgave his brothers for selling him into slavery. Stephen, being unjustly stoned to death, he extended a gesture of forgiveness to those that murdered him. And the number one, the greatest example of forgiveness in the Bible is Jesus. Who was unjustly condemned, unjustly condemned to, the, to death on a cross. Instead of calling on all his heavenly powers available to him to rescue him, Matthew 26 and 53 he willingly died for our sins. So, it is important to understand that if God had not forgiven us, we could never be saved. Therefore, we are to forgive others. So, if it, didn't, if it doesn't matter... So it doesn't matter what the circumstances are, what the sin is, how deeply you were hurt, or how many times it happened, God forgives you in those very circ same circumstances. And that is exactly how he commands us to forgive. And because the Holy Spirit of the same God who has forgiven you that way is inside of you, and he will give you the grace to forgive that very same way. Yeah. So how do you know if you've forgiven someone? Number one, if your first thought, if your first thought you have about that person is to harm them, you ain't forgiven them. <laughs> number two, <laughs> number one, if your first thought you have about them is not the harm that they cause you. Number two, if you can think positive thoughts about this person. Number three, 
if you're not thinking about revenge anymore. Number four, if you have helped them, number four, if you would help them if the opportunity presented itself. And number five, if you wish them well in life. Often, the hardest person to forgive is yourself. Because you are so hurt, you realize that you are, you are the one to blame. You are the one who did it to yourself. And you want to make yourself hurt. But how can you love yourself if you can't forgive yourself? So I want to go back to uh, Matthew 6 and 14. And 15, I'm sorry. Matthew 6 and 15. But it, yeah, I want to go to uh, 15. But if ye forgive not men their trespass, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Now, you have to understand, but is important. But, but means on the contrary. But is used to introduce an added statement, usually sometimes, usually something that is different from what you have said before. But negates or invalidates everything that's said before it. Everything said before it. So, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will hinder your relationship with God. It causes bitterness in our life. It creates a hardened heart. When you harbor resentment, offensive, bitterness, and anger towards other people, it blocks your prayers. Unforgiveness creates emotional storms of distress in which feelings of stress, anxiety, depression, insecurity, and fear surfaces. Unforgiveness <laughs> it's spiritually destructive because it because it's contrary to God's will and affects our emotions, our thoughts, our prayers, and our relationships. Unforgiveness affects your spirit and soul. It hinders your spiritual growth and fruitfulness. Unforgiveness believe, builds a wall between you and God. Because fear, because fear replaced peace. Imprisonment replaced freedom. An unforgiving spirit is not only fail to solve anything, but it acts like a poison on your soul. Because you cannot harbor anger and bitterness in your heart without bringing great harm to yourself. So the best way to lose bitterness is by forgiving. Remember, forgiveness is not optional. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. Forgiveness is mandatory. And um, I just wanted to say, like I was saying, it blessed me because all through my childhood, and adulthood, I had an unforgiving heart towards my father because uh, I knew who he was, but the lies that he'd given me over the years. And I had to learn how to forgive him. But even though, even sometimes you say you forgive, oh. deep in your heart, you really don't. You, you still you. holding on to stuff. And that's what I had to realize, how it affected me, because I thought I was over that. And I thought I forgave him, and I walked away from it. But it was deeper than what I thought. So forgiveness is very important. And for God's forgiveness, if you would read that, it says if, which makes it conditional. 
It is conditional. You have to learn to forgive others in order for God to forgive you. So in my closing, <laughs> in my closing, if I hadn't, if I had said anything to bless you, remember, forgiveness is not optional. It's mandatory. We have to learn to forgive one another. Even though sometimes we might not even know what the problem is. We might not even know. We might have said something in passing or, or think you said something. But you have to learn to forgive each other. You have to learn that um, unconditional love towards one another. You have to love each other, forgive each other. And in my closing, <laughs> forgiveness. <laughs> Come on and give it up for De Deacon Turner. Ministered on forgiveness is not optional. It's mandatory. So the question I have for the people in the house tonight is, are you ready to forgive? Because we understand now it's not optional. It's something we have to do. It is mandatory by God. If you want, listen, if you want to receive forgiveness, you got to give forgiveness. Come on and give it up for deep tonight. Give it up for Deacon Frazier. And Minister Charlene Carter. Three awesome, awesome speakers on tonight. It blessed my natural bone soul. Listen, down to my, down in my shana na. I have been blessed tonight. Have y'all been blessed tonight? Did they say something to you tonight that you can walk out of here with? I saw something earlier as I was studying, and it said that it's not, it's not really the obedience of the principle. It's the application of the principle. Does that make sense? It's not our belief in our faith faith that yes God gone but can you walk faith out can you walk out forgiveness y'all ain't talking <laughs> can, can you apply it now that you understand what it means right can you be long suffering now that you know that it is something God requires listen and it's not your reaction And can you be patient? God is amazing. Patience, long-suffering, and forgiveness. Do you know that it takes you to be patient and long-suffering in forgiveness? That don't come overnight. <laughs> it don't come overnight. Amen. So listen, we've got to learn to walk in patience. Be long-suffering toward others, y'all. Don't be so quick to kick people to the curb. Don't be so quick to give up on people. Amen. Listen, because if God had a gave up on us, you know what? The whole house should have went up in an uproar. Because when I think about where I came from, and when I think about the stuff I've done, look, done to others and done to me, but he was patient and he was long-suffering toward me? 
I have no right, authority, or anything to hold that over somebody's head. I have no right to withhold long suffering from anybody. No right. All you got to do is think about Jesus. Think about what he did for you. <laughs> think about what he did for you and how he treated you in your mess. Y'all ain't talking. Okay. I ain't going to preach. But anyway, come on, somebody. Give these three amazing speakers a hand clap of praise. I'm one proud mama. You hear me? Do you hear me? It was, listen, girl. Yes, it was. <laughs> Amen. I am one proud mama. God is, yes, come through Jesus. He is doing some amazing things. Listen, I got a word for you. You was on the cruise, and Brittany texted me um, in a response to a text that I sent out to a group. And uh, I didn't know you was, I'm talking to you, mm -hmm, D. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I didn't know you and Tr and the girl here was on the cruise with these other folks. I didn't know. But it's okay. It's good. I'm so glad y'all enjoyed it. I love the girl trip thing. It was amazing. We all y'all ought to do it every year. Maybe take me with you. But anyway. <laughs> but Brittany responded to me um, about a group text. And I think it was about the youth trip. And she said something about I said, oh. I said, I got a word for D. And I might not give it to you over this microphone. But I pray right now that the Father opens your heart, your mind, and your spirit to receive. You have no earthly idea what God has for you. No idea, baby. But for him to allow me to see it in HD, it blessed my soul. I don't see everything in HD. But he allowed me to see your promise in HD. All right? So come on, we're going to prepare our hearts for giving. Listen, this Sunday is what Sunday? Super Seed Sunday. Super Seed Sunday. Amen. We want you to come and bring your gifts, amen, your super seed. Listen, super seed is a blessing. Amen. We have had other leaders say, man, where y'all get that from? Bishop told them it was a download from heaven, and it has been a blessing to our ministry and to our people. Amen. amen. So they are implementing it. They may not call it super seed, but it's the same principle. <laughs> amen. 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 So come on, we're standing all over the building. Third Sunday, Super Seed Sunday. Listen, we've got a busy month of July. We've got a busy month in August. But come on, somebody say grace. God is going to give us all the grace that we need to endure. Amen. Amen. And we're not going to get, look, we're not going to be walking around here dragging, talking, I'm tired. No, no, no. We're going to have that exuberant praise and that energy, come on, that we talked about. Last week, last week, right? Because it's going to spill over. Look, if you need a little bit, I'm going to come lift you up on this side. If I need a little bit, just come lift me up on this side. Amen. Amen. That's, who, that's what's going to happen. You need a lift? No, I was doing the Dollar Tree. Oh, no, that's Sunday. It's the oil. She done been yoked. <laughs> She's still under the yoking. <laughs> she got the Dollar Seed box thinking it's Sunday. It is Wednesday. She want to be yoked again. That's what it is. She... <laughs> Amen. Bless her heart. Amen. It's all right, baby. You was ready to work. What here? 
Amen. Come on and lift your seat. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We give you praise. We tell you thank you, God, for the awesome word on tonight. We thank you, Lord God, that for the application that is going to take place in the life of every believer that sat under this word on tonight. We thank you, Lord God, that the word will be transformational, that our lives will be changed, oh God, because of this word that is going to go deep and penetrate in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. Now, Father, as we sow our seed in good ground, thank you, Lord, for the principle that applies that some will receive 30 some 60 some 100 fold according to our faith father we thank you that faith is increasing in this house in the name of Jesus we thank you now father that because of our faith the promises will be yes and amen concerning us in Jesus name now as we leave this place but never your presence thank you for your angels that will encamp around about us keeping us safe to the appointed time of our return in Jesus name now somebody give God a real high I praise hallelujah hallelujah come on we say good night to facebook and youtube i'm sorry say good night to facebook and youtube we'll see you back here sunday morning nine o'clock a.m for super seed come on no but none other than ap leverett is gonna come up here with her fireball self and bring the word i'm excited amen amen come from where you are